what are like the the basic protocols for some of the most typical things that you see? Is it are you starting with diet? Are you starting with exercise? Like how do you get people to take the the sort of um, edge off whatever they might be experiencing? Well, I, I'm usually working always in those four circles. So yes, I'll scan them because if I don't look, I don't know. But not everybody can do it. So in Change Your Brain, Change Your Life, I think that's my book you read. There are yeah. questionnaires that go, oh, well, you're more likely to have a limbic issue here or a basal ganglia and anxiety issue with these symptoms or prefrontal cortex issue, which is so common for us. Um, and then I'll go, oh, well, if this is likely the issue, these are the supplements I would think about. And I tend to start with supplements. I mean, unless you're schizophrenic or you're a brittle bipolar person, I generally start with supplements first. Um, and so at home, people can go to brainhealthassessment.com, find out which of the 16 types they have, and then we'll work on the biology. Along with biology, yes, you should exercise. Of course you should. And there are certain kinds of exercise, especially coordination exercises. So racket sports, by far my favorite. Very few head injuries, but they work your cerebellum. And the cerebellum, I think of it as the Rodney Dangerfield part of the brain. It gets no respect, even though it's 10% of the brain's volume, but has 50% of the brain's neurons. Can you imagine something that has half the brain's neurons actually gets very little coverage uh, in the scientific media. And so what is the cerebellum doing? Is it um, to do with coordination? And well, that's movement? what they used to think. Yeah, coordination movement. But now we know 80% of it is dedicated to cognition and emotion. And cognition in what way? Just like general processing? Or? Processing speed. You want to talk about something near and dear to my heart. I would love to be able to process raw data faster. That's how I think of it. Um, I'm assuming then that's cerebellum. Cerebellum. So I start playing table tennis. That's step one. What else? What am I supplementing? What other activities am I doing? So a racket sport. If your wife likes ballroom dancing, become good at it because it's a coordination mm. exercise. And then you want to stimulate it. And there's certain supplements that I actually like, like theanine, because it helps you feel relaxed, but it really also helps you focus. And this is over the counter? Mm -hmm. Rhodiola, ashwagandha, ginseng. We actually make something we like called focus and energy, and we find it stimulates your frontal lobes and your cerebellum at the same time. So, and then stop hurting it. Alcohol is directly toxic to the cerebellum. I mean, that's why they make you try to walk a straight line. You can't because your cerebellum's not working. It's right. being poisoned. Um, right. So I hardly ever drink. What are some other things that people do on a day-to-day -day basis that could be totally just horrific for that? So if you're playing football or your kid's playing football, what they're doing is they're banging their frontal lobes. And there's actually this really cool term I like. It's called cross cerebellar diaschesis. It's like, whoa. So what does that mean? Sense. If you hurt your left frontal lobe, it actually turns off your right cerebellum. Hmm. And if you hurt your right frontal lobe, it turns off the left cerebellum. And if you're heading foot soccer balls, you're turning off both sides of your cerebellum. Hmm. So we just have to do so much better at protecting the brain. Talk to me about diet's impact on that. What are some um, main sort of ballpark things that you should be pulling out? You know, it's not hard. And again, if I put this, these things on the board, people would get it. Sugar is pro-inflammatory. It increases erratic brain cell firing and it's addictive. So if you can get rid of or really limit sugar, that's really helpful for people. The more colorful, clean fruits and vegetables, the better. The, the one misnomer people often have is, oh, I should go on a low-fat diet. The problem with that is 60% of the solid weight of your brain is fat, and low-fat diets can actually trigger depression. Mm -hmm. And so I like healthy fat, fish, although um, clean fish. Um, and so swordfish is out. 
and never would have that. It's just loaded with mercury. And I'm a huge fan of salmon, wild salmon, um, avocados. They're like God's butter, right? It's just a great brain food for you. Um, you have to be calorie smart uh, because 70% um, of us are overweight, 40% of us are obese. I published two studies that show as your weight goes up, the physical size and function of your brain goes down. Mm -hmm. should scare the fat off anyone. When I read that, I ended up losing 30 pounds. You know, I'd like tried for 30 years and I just never really had the motivation until I went, I am not going to have a smaller brain. I am not going to do that. Um, so clean protein, healthy fat, actually at every meal because it helps stabilize your blood sugar. One of the biggest things that will steal your mind is have a high fasting blood sugar level. Um, it's actually been shown to be associated with brain atrophy and it makes your blood vessels brittle and more likely to break. So there's a term I like, I didn't coin it, but I like it called diabesity. It's a combination of being overweight with high blood sugar. It's a disaster for brain function. And this is why people get addicted. It's carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates. So if you ingest cupcake, mm -hmm. your pancreas sees all the sugar and it sends out an insulin burst. Well, that insulin burst drives tryptophan, the amino acid precursor to serotonin, into your brain. So when you eat bread or pasta or potatoes, your brain likes it because it feels happier. It feels more relaxed. Now, the problem is it kills you early. <laughs> and so you have to sort of take this. But you know, the other thing that drives tryptophan into the brain is exercise. And so, and many of my athletes, they exercise intensely so they don't get depressed. Mm. And when they get hurt, they get depressed because they can't get their antidepressant fix. And so they'll go to sugar and then that'll make them feel terrible about themselves. And so know what's good for tryptophan to getting into your brain and know what's bad. So before we started rolling, you said something so fascinating. And you said, if I were basically an evil genius and I wanted to just absolutely destroy people's health, I would create what kind of lifestyle? So let's just take this mnemonic I've created on how to keep your brain healthy. It's called Bright Minds. Mm -hmm. And so if I was the evil ruler, the B in Bright Mind stands for blood flow is I would give all children social media and video games and encourage them to play as much as they could because that would drop blood flow to their brain. Brand new study, the more screen time, the smaller the brain. That's it's a little Why? horrifying. Well, one, they're not going outside. They're not getting exercise. They're not getting the sun. Mm -hmm. We have a massive deficiency of vitamin D in this country. And exercise increases something called BDNF, or brain-derived neurotrophic factor. It helps your brain grow. So we're losing miracle grow. Retirement and aging is the R in bright minds. If I was an evil ruler, I would let everybody retire at 55. And, <laughs> not have to, and then I'd put them in front of the TV They're, and make them angry at you know, whatever political fight is going on. Uh, the eye is inflammation, which comes basically from low omega-3 fatty acid levels, processed foods, gut problems. And so I'd like, oh, nobody gets fish in my kingdom. And we don't have fresh food. Um, we basically have fast food restaurants. Um, the G is genetics. Um, and I don't know what you have in your family. In mine, I have heart disease and obesity. Obesity in a big way in my family. Yeah, but as you, we can see, genes are not a death sentence. Mm. They should be a wake-up call to do the right things to decrease your genetic vulnerability. So if I was the evil ruler, I would go, you have obesity in your family. I'd do a public campaign so it's in your family, why worry about it, live it up, 
you're going to die early, enjoy the path as opposed to what I think is actually more rational, is you have this vulnerability, you need to be really serious about your health. H is head trauma. Um, I'd encourage all kids to hit soccer balls with their head, to play tackle football, to ride horses. And people go, well, why are you down on horses? It's like, well, what killed Superman? It was a horse. I can't tell you the number of patients I see who had serious addictions because they had fallen off of a horse and had no frontal lobe wow. function. The T is toxins. So if I was the evil ruler, I would get rid of all of the environmental protections so that we are filled with air pollution, water pollution. And I would never, I would tell the manufacturers they don't have to put the ingredients on the labels, not only for food, but also for personal products. And one of the things, things like parabens and phthalates are hormone disruptors. Mm -hmm. And aluminum, when we're putting them on our body, whatever goes in your body, goes on your body, goes in your body, mm -hmm. becomes your body. Um, I'd think of alcohol as a health food. We've certainly had that craze. <laughs> I would legalize, um, not only legalize marijuana, but it's like, let's not say it's good for us because all of my published research says it's bad. Mm -hmm. that, now, does that mean if someone's dying of cancer and it'll help their pain and help the nausea and help them eat, God bless them, right? I mean, so let's be rational about it. I just saw someone who'd been smoking pot for 50 years and his brain was remarkably older than he was. Um, the M is mental health. And um, if I was the evil ruler, I'd create CNN and Fox News. And that, it, that ruins people's health because they always lead with negative. They increase anger and frustration and polarization. The more you're exposed to it, the angrier you get. Mm. And the more it separates you from other people. Um, the eye is immunity and infections. I would belittle people who are testing patients for Lyme disease. My great stories are patients who have Lyme one girl, she's 16, she became psychotic after a visit to Yosemite, and she went, to, had three psychiatric hospitalizations. None of the medications worked. She became a shell of herself. She came to our clinic. And I'm like, so what happened at Yosemite? And her mother said, we were surrounded by six deer, and we thought it was a magical moment. She got bit by a deer tick that caused Lyme, that then caused her to lose her mind. And on an antibiotic, she got her mind back. The end is neurohormone deficiencies. And so letting kids hit things with their head actually drops their hormone levels. And so I'd test for that. Diabetes, I'd create the American food system. ISIS has nothing on our food industry. The real, and I'm not kidding when I say it, the weapons of mass destruction are highly processed, pesticide sprayed, high glycemic, low fiber, food-like substances stored in plastic containers. Mm. They're ruining our health. If I'm right, you know, and I'm not the only one who's published this, there's been, I think, 20 other scientists. As your weight goes up, the size of your brain goes down. It's like, oh my God, if 70% of us are overweight, it's the biggest brain drain in the history of the United States. In fact, it's a national security crisis because they're not letting as many, not as many people are eligible to sign up for military service because we just have an unhealthy mm. population. And if I was an evil ruler, I would create screens that have blue lights because they disrupt sleep. Because uh, the S in bright minds is sleep. So there's so many things happening that I'm just, yeah. it gives me pause about yeah. the society we're raising our babies and grandbabies in. If you like that clip, check out another powerful clip right here, and I'll see you there.